Um, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, this is a free class from Seeker. So welcome to a PT lesson. I'm recording this lesson for students who are not able to attend it. You can always find this lesson on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So look for Seeker Sydney and you can find recording of this lesson. So these are the uh, services that we offer along with our uh, migration services. We offer all these services so, and uh, feel free to attend our free PTE and IELTS classes. Today is going to be a demonstrative uh, class where I'll be demonstrating each question type from speaking and if time permits from listening as well. My name is Ruth and I'm going to be your uh, PTE trainer for today. Before we move on, uh, this is a brief um, differentiation or a brief uh, difference between IELTS and your PTE test. So the IELTS test has a human being marking your speaking as well as your writing tasks, whereas PTE is marked um, by no human. It's completely artificial intelligence marked. And the IELTS test has no, uh, no provision of of transferable scores, whereas the PTE test has something called transferable scores, where scores are transferred from one module to another module. Just for you to understand, or just to elaborate on transferable scores, while you compare, uh, imagine uh, you're taking a speaking test. So while you're taking the speaking test in any English proficiency test, you'll be listening to the question and you're supposed to answer back. So while you're answering, your speaking skill is used, but your listening skill is also used because you're listening to the question. But in many English proficiency tests other than PTE, there is no points given to listening because even though another skill is used, there's no points given there. But in, uh, in PTE, if another skill is used while attempting a particular question, you get points for that particular module as well. So these are a few practice websites that you can use to practice your um, PTE from. So the first one, Real PTE, and the second one are my personal favorites. There is a high chance that your questions tend to repeat from here. So we'll start off with PTE speaking. PTE speaking is called the backbone of PTE because it transfers about 30, 34 points towards your reading module, and this module also transfers 45 points towards listening. There are five different types of question for PTE speaking. We'll deal with each of it one after the other. In your PTE speaking, there are three criteria or three factors for what you are marked. You're marked for your content, fluency and pronunciation. Content answers the question, what to speak. What to speak, whatever is required in the question. So the content part of your speaking is being transferred to the transferable module. So suppose you're doing a question type in speaking, which gives you points to reading. The content, that is if you can speak without adding, without removing, without skipping anything, you get your maximum content points towards your reading. So your content in short has nothing to give or take towards speaking. So speaking does not depend on the content part of your question. Speaking depends on fluency and pronunciation. These factors answer the question how to speak, how to speak fluently and with the right pronunciation. So for us to get our maximum fluency points, there are four don't do's or four not to speak. How not to speak? Speak without hesitation, speak without repetition, speak without long pauses, and speak without correcting yourself. And two things to do to get our maximum fluency points, what to do? Speak with the same speed throughout because you know that your speech is converted to waves, so it is in the wave form. And for us to avoid the stored waves, we try and maintain the same speed throughout and speak in your flat tone. Or in other words, there is no need for us to intonate or enunciate too much so as to avoid a distortion in the graph. 
And for us to get our maximum pronunciation points, our accent doesn't matter because pronunciation uh, many a time is synonymous with accent. But for your information, accent doesn't matter. PT gives you a leeway or it gives you a leeway to understand uh, or to, to understand where you're coming from. For example, if you're listening to me, you would know for sure that I'm from the Indian part of the world because of the way I pronounce or the way I speak. So that's called my accent. I've got an Indian accent, but my accent doesn't matter because while I'm filling up my form for my PT test, it gives me a leeway asking what my first language is or what my mother tongue is. So it doesn't matter. But what matters is the right pronunciation. So for you to instantly improve your pronunciation, open up your mouth wider, that helps you. Also use an interactive phonemic, phonemic chart to help you improve your pronunciation. Understand the 42 sounds of English, the vowels and the way consonants are pronounced. And uh, that I think that, that that's how you improve your pronunciation. Before you start off your test, you're given a chance to introduce yourself personally. So this is not a marked section, but attempting this confidently would boost your confidence and you would be able to take your, the rest of your test in a, in a very confident manner. So you could use this template to your personal introduction. You could start like this. My name is Ruth, I'm from India. I'm taking my exam to get my PR or for further studies, whatever is your reason. I like to read books and watch movies and thank you. You could use exactly the same template. So we start off our speaking. As soon as you finish your introduction, you start with your speaking test. That's how you start your PTE. Your speaking is your first module. Your total speaking is for a period of 40 to 45 minutes. And there are five different types of questions. The first question type is called read aloud. This is a simple question type but it's quite crucial for you to achieve your reading scores. The, you, in your test, you'll be getting about six to eight of these questions. It's important for your speaking as well as your reading because this question type transfers 30 to 34 points towards your reading. So while discussing this, I'm going to tell you how to get our 30, 34 points to reading and how to attempt this question type to boost our speaking scores. Okay. So what happens in this question type? You'll be given a reading passage or on your screen, a reading passage is going to be displayed. A paragraph is going to be displayed and you are required to read that passage aloud. So on your screen, a paragraph is going to be displayed and you're given 40 seconds of prep time or preparation time. And after which you hear a beep sound or a chime, and then you're supposed to read aloud your passage. So your reading skill is used. That's why this gives you points to reading. Now I should remind you that every speaking question type is based on three factors, content, fluency, and pronunciation. Now the content part of this question, what do you think is the content? Every word in this question is your content part of the question. Your content or what to speak, all the words, what to speak is always transferred towards the transferable. In this case, it's transferred towards your reading. So to, for you to get your maximum content points, if you can speak without adding to this passage, if you can speak without skipping any words from this passage, or if you can speak without replacing any words, you'll be getting your maximum content points for your question. Now, there are two other factors that remains, fluency and pronunciation. So read with the same speed, read in your flat tone without enunciating a lot, without uh, intonating too much and open up your mouth wider so that you sound nice and clear on your microphone. But before I forget, so you'll be given um, a headphone with, with your mic like this. So how to place your mic position or where should you place it? So place it in a way that your mic is always on the left ear and your mic is parallel to your nose tip. So I've seen students who place it too close to your nose. If you do so, your breath will be recorded. Remember, you're not 
listened to by a human being, right? So this will again, and your word, your speech is converted to, to waveforms and it's displayed as a graph. So you should understand that and not let it too close to your mouth, not too far away from your mouth, that it's parallel to your nose tip is the right spot for you to speak. Okay, now remember I told you that you're given this passage and you're given 40 seconds of preparation time. So your 40 seconds of prep time is quite crucial. What you do here matters a lot. So what do you do in your 40 seconds of preparation time? Three things to do. First thing, in your prep time of 40 seconds, read aloud quickly. Don't waste a single second of your 40 seconds. Read the passage quickly aloud. The reason is you get really familiar with the words in the passage and you're practicing reading aloud. Second thing that you do is, while you're reading, plan your pauses. So plan where to pause. Before I forget, in your PT speaking, you can pause at multiple places, but you cannot pause for more than three seconds at a time. You can't keep quiet at a time for more than three seconds. You won't be recorded otherwise. So where can you pause? Where do you plan your pauses? You plan your pause at every full stop. At every period, you pause. That's a given. Sometimes what happens is your full stop is far away and your sentence is too big. So you might run out of breath. So in such cases, I suggest you pause at a comma or you pause at maybe a conjunction or so. So three things to do in your prep time. In your 40 seconds, when it begins, read your passage. Practice reading your passage quickly once. And while you're reading, tell yourself, this is my first pause, my second pause, my third pause. You plan your pauses. And the third thing that you do is you plan your pronunciation. So these passages are going to be academic and you will encounter words that you're not too familiar with. In such a case, you practice how to read it or you practice reading your difficult words. Okay, so three things that you do in your 40 seconds of preparation time is very important. The first thing that you do is read aloud once. You practice reading aloud without wasting time. And then while you're reading, you plan your pauses. So you pause at every full stop, that's a given. If the full stop is too far, you're running out of breath, pause at a grammar word or at a comma. Third thing, plan your pronunciation. Okay, practice your difficult words. So I'll just give you a show of how to do this or I'll just demonstrate on how to do this. And then, um, and then we'll go on to the next question type, okay? So give me a minute while I open up my practice site. You can't hear me? Uh, lo um, do you want to log out? Okay, so this is how your, uh, your lesson is going to look, or I'm sorry, your question is going to look like. So this is how your question is going to look like. So let me show you. Here is your 40 seconds of preparation time. Don't waste your time, start reading. You're practicing loudly. The United States it has, is at present the world's market for motor cars and trucks. An agent for US Bureau of Foreign and Domestic Commerce reports a prosperous condition of affairs prevailing in Japan, which is buying more automobiles, especially large cars than ever before. So you plan your pauses. So I plan my pause at the first pause over here at this full stop. Then what's a prosperous condition of affairs prevailing in Japan at this comma. And then at this full stop at four, I breathe in deeply. I breathe out. The United States is at present the world's market for motor cars and trucks. An agent for the US Bureau of Foreign and Domestic Commerce reports a prosperous conditions of affairs prevailing in Japan, 
which is buying more automobiles, especially large cars than ever before. And I click finish. So I try to maintain uh, even spacing of my pauses. I try to maintain my flattest tone and I try to read in, in the same speed throughout without intonating much, okay? So I'll show you another question. 40 seconds of preparation time. The most important issue is concerned with the problem of funding. Social services receive different donations or grants from the government. However, these sums are not sufficient for the solution of all problems. The second most important issue consists of huge spending. The money social services achieve is not enough for normal functioning. The third problem affecting human services is the lack of skilled and experienced employees. So I plant my poses at every full stop. Okay, I look at my difficult words. I breathe in, breathe out. The most important issues concerned with the problem of funding. Social services receive different donations or grants from the government. However, these sums are not sufficient for the solution for all problems. The second most important issue consists of huge spending. The money social services achieve is not enough for normal functioning. The third problem affecting human services is the lack of skilled and experienced employees. As soon as I finish speaking, I click finish. So I even out or I space out my pauses. I try to maintain a flat tone. And over here, if you can see, sufficient for the, I faltered a little bit, but I did not stop and correct myself. I pretended like I never made a mistake and I continued to read. Okay, so that's how you do your read aloud. Even out your, your pausing, plan your pauses in your 40 seconds, practice reading once, plan your pauses while you're practicing, read in your flattest tone, read with the same speed, practice your difficulty word and do it. You'll have about six or eight of these questions, one after the other. It's very important for your reading because it can transfer 34, 35 points towards your reading. 